breaking news. Donald Trump's tax returns have surfaced, at least a portion of Donald Trump's 2005 tax return. He made more than $150 million in that year, mazel tov. This describes the types of income, but not the sources. Okay. It's particularly relevant for us to say, where'd you get the money? I've been covering financial services for New York Times for seven years. All of my 2016 was writing, you know, various stories on Donald Trump and his finances. Last night, David K. Johnson went on the Rachel Maddow show. He had pages of Donald Trump's 2005 tax returns. There's not much there. But one thing that really stuck out to us was just how big his income number was for that year. It was over $150 million. And that just didn't jive with anything we knew about that time in his life. And that, that began this huge odyssey that we've been on. came in and got a group together which included David and Russ. The numbers seem so outrageous and perplexing. Um, I'm wrestling with that as well, but I think that's our uh, main enemy right now. Russ, he's a great reporter who also has got just a great way with data. David just has an in incredible gift to source people and to get people to talk. All right. I think we should just dig backwards and See where we go. Yeah. There are a handful of large questions about Donald Trump. You know, whether it's, was there any collusion with the Russians? What are his attitudes, his private attitudes towards women and others? One of the biggest is, how wealthy is he? And how did he acquire his wealth? He chose not to make his finances as public as, as his predecessors. He chose not to make his tax returns public. I mean, presidents usually make years of tax returns public. It just made us all feel uncomfortable as journalists that a president of the United States would serve with us knowing so little about his finances. I mean, he became president, I think, in large part through a very simple idea. Donald Trump, self-made billionaire. And so we're trying to peel back some really big layers on, on a very important figure in the history of our country. We started looking at the 2005 tax return and trying to understand what was there just from the three pages that we had. You know, people are talking about where his money is coming from and everybody's like, Russia, 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 Russia. First of all, we just wanted to focus on money from his father. People, I don't think, are just aware of how much money came to him. You're a star, Mr. Trump, and you're a businessman. I have here a collection of some of your uh, quotes. Trump, there is no one my age who has accomplished more. Everyone can't be the best. I'll tell you this. You know, I, I kind of, after reading your book, I kind of like your father better than you. He's a nice guy. <laughs> You have good taste? He's a good guy. This is Fred Trump. Uh, he built middle-income housing in Queens and Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And little Donald go along and rummage around the construction sites. I must say, there's, there is some personal information in here. Not a lot, but... I'd like to, you know, leave it out as much as possible. Well, that's getting that's more and more you difficult. Get, right? when you, if you're going to be worth a billion dollars, you've got to start answering some questions here. As we started to dig into what the possible sources of revenue were, that number, that huge number that we saw, uh, Donald Trump's taxes, we realized that a big portion of that was likely proceeds from the sale of his father's empire. When Fred Trump died in 1999, and in 2004, Donald Trump and his siblings sold almost all of Fred Trump's empire. The only story that had been done on it had the price for 600 and some million dollars. That was sort of the first inkling of just how much Donald Trump got from his father. And the incredible part about that story was, you know, everything Donald Trump seems to do gets so much publicity. You know, he's launching, like, lines of vodka and Trump steaks and Trump water. But the family did not want attention drawn to that sale. We spent months 
going through public records, just trying to figure out what was transferred and what the price was. Where's the mortgage document, just so we've got it noted? It's in, um, it's in the, on the drive, yeah, okay, under okay. property records, and then there's a separate okay, folder for 220. Document. And we started to realize not only was there that one big payday, there was dozens of streams of revenue from Fred to Donald. Good afternoon, good afternoon, members of the committee. It is my privilege to appear before you. Donald Trump's sister, Marianne Barry Trump, was a federal judge for a number of years. Like all federal judges, each year that she was a judge, she had to file a financial disclosure form. That lists like every asset that she controls. So I took those 2,200 pages of financial disclosure forms she filed and then made this chart. She listed all the trust funds by name. She named the actual business entities that she was getting revenue from. Those were her father's businesses. So that was a great aid to us. All the siblings got that same amount. So what we saw for her was a good proxy for Donald Trump. But it's clear he got more than a couple hundred million dollars from his father just in one swoop, and then millions of dollars every year, it looks like, for decades prior to that. Donald Trump, one of his sort of go-to sound bites is, I started with a million dollar loan for my father and I had to pay him back with interest. It has not been easy for me. And, you know, I, I started off in Brooklyn. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. I came into Manhattan and I had to pay him back and I had to pay him back with interest. A million dollars isn't very much compared to what I built. In his kind of version of how he got rich, he parlayed this million dollar loan from his father into a $10 billion fortune. And our work has found that he's way off. We've identified more than 200 separate streams of revenue that was flowing from Fred Trump to Donald Trump. Their dad turned his kids into his bankers, taking loans from them. He was paying them interest. So we started to unwind all these things, and it was, it was nuts. All right, so, so, where are we? so where are we? The bottom line. In today's dollars, we've tracked $402 million mm -hmm. from Fred to Donald. The flow and transfer of wealth was constant mm -hmm. and substantial throughout Donald's life. Donald was making $215,000 a year by the age of three. Okay. It's actually so difficult to imagine how he would have gotten the wealth that he has today with, without, you know, right. if you take this away. Right. If you take the element of risk out of entrepreneurship, it's not really entrepreneurial anymore, right? I mean, there, he never had any real risk of losing everything. You know, every business of his that I've been able to get a look at doesn't actually make money. But when you realize that he doesn't need to make money, he needs to have his name continue to be out there to look like he's a highly successful person who's everywhere. Real estate developer Donald Trump opened his new casino today. Ladies and gentlemen, the author of The Art of the Deal, Donald the Trump. Somehow it's just worked out well for me. We were moving forward to publishing a story, but we all knew we needed a fact checking to stress test everything we had. I went out and got the full will of um, Fred Trump. We found these buildings that Fred transferred to his children. And that's when we started to realize that there was all these other things going on. So, Just, can we talk? I'm okay. saying, I want to talk. Our story has morphed. Since the last time we talked. Yes. Okay. And it's this basic question of how they valued their dad's estate. And here's like the remarkable sort of bottom line thing that we've discovered. They put a value of $13.6 million on a whole bunch of apartment buildings that in fact we believe were worth $244 million. Wow. <laughs> what that means is as opposed to the $9 million in estate taxes, they would have paid $173 million. Jesus. 
This is Tyson's Park Apartments, which were sold for $46 million. Look what happens when they're asked to put a value. No value. Right. Literally? Literally. They didn't no fill value. in the line. No, they didn't fill in the line. And it's not like a whiteout situation yeah, yeah. here. It's like if they just didn't fill in a line. We have no explanation for that. It's really bizarre. Who was the executor of his estate? The executor of Fred Trump's estate and the Trump kids. So the president, Robert, Mary Ann. They all saw me. Like, these numbers are so crazy. We're just right. trying to, I mean, it's almost like, what are we missing? Yeah. <clears throat> what don't we understand? I mean, we've Is already gone to experts. And what, yes, do, what, do, ask, what do experts say? They've said right. that it's re major red flags, that they can't explain it, and it's very troubling. We've had a lot of really strong language that this is like not, it doesn't right. add up. This is a big story. It's a really big story on a big subject. And it will, I think, reshape the portrait of the President of the United States. I mean, we have information that no one else has. That's our business, right? I mean, so we want people to know it. And the sooner the better. We're here today to announce historic tax relief to the American people. This is a once-in-a-generation opportunity, and I guess it's probably something I could say that I'm very good at. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Well, the Senate is inching closer to passing tax reform, voting yesterday to begin debate, but this isn't a done deal yet. Republicans are now scrambling to negotiate changes, hoping to get enough votes to finally get this done. This is a delicate and messy process. Some lawmakers are even complaining they don't know what version they're debating right now. He's actually sort of flirting with an examination of, of his tax history and how they use the tax laws because of things he said in the last couple of weeks. So if there's a way to accelerate the completion, I think it would be, because my fear is you're going to miss an amazing news window to write about Donald Trump and his taxes. It might even influence the debate over tax reform if people got a sense of what, you know, how one wealthy family over generations were able to use America's tax laws to avoid paying taxes, enrich themselves. It's gonna, that's going to be such a powerful moment in the debate. I hear what you're saying, and I totally get it. We, I think we're all, <laughs> like, no, been around. We've been in the rodeo long it. enough to yeah, know, like, sure. how this works. But I would say, actually, the tax story is this different beast. We've been piecing that. together from the public records and the other document that we already have in hand <clears throat> the basic notion, and we're seeing things that are clearly over the line in terms of legality, things that look like just fraudulent behavior. We need to talk to more people. We identified a list of people that we felt, be they accountants or, you know, relatives or people at the IRS that could have these documents. And the editors were looking at us going, that sounds just crazy. It's not going to work. And I mean, it was just kind of like, there's no way it's going to happen. These stories can be frustrating. There's no question that this has gone on for a long time. But we stake the reputation of the paper ourselves and the rest of the media on, on big stories. You just want to get it right. If you could just walk me through, and we can talk a little bit more about the specifics of the actual case we're dealing with, right? No, no, completely on, no, no, completely on background. These were approaches that took weeks of work to prepare for, and second approaches that took weeks of work to prepare for. We started knocking on doors. Nobody invited us in. And it was, it, it was really, really dark moments. You know, it feels like you're kind of casting around in the dark. You see your time going in blocks of months, and like, are we coming to something that's important enough to warrant that? You know, in stories like this, you're always hoping for these kind of magic moments where a door that you've been knocking on and hasn't been opening suddenly opens. You know, and that's, that's precisely what happened in this case.
It was just this Alice in Wonderland moment where we got these documents. We didn't want anybody to see this stuff. So we had them set up um, a room, and only the three of us have access to the room. We were incredibly fortunate to find sources who were able to give us access to over 200 different tax returns. There are tax returns of Trump companies, Trump partnerships, Trump trusts. Fred Trump's estate tax return is in the building right now. It's incredible that we have it, and that opened a door to understanding a huge transfer of wealth that happened and gave us so much more information to be able to understand the tax games that were played. And then once you sort of pull the string, the whole thing unraveled. So by the 1990s, Fred Trump is in his 80s, he's getting older. He had very little debt and he had so much cash. And so this was a problem for Donald Trump and his siblings because if he dies with this cash, they're going to have to pay 55% gift tax on it. They're going to lose more than half of it. In August 1992, they set up a company called All County. All County was this company owned by the Trump children, including Donald. And the stated purpose was it was going to be like this central purchasing agent for all the stuff that Fred needed to do to fix up his buildings. So if they needed a new boiler, right? All County would go out, take advantage of the economies of scale. Fred Trump would benefit because he'd get a lower price. But then we realized that All County, owned by the Trump children, was paying for boilers. And then they were charging Fred for the very same boilers, this big markup. They were padding the invoices. They would buy a boiler for 10000 and then they'd turn around and they'd sell it to Fred for 15000 And that's when you start realizing, oh, wait a minute. They're using all county to disguise cash gifts from Fred Trump as if they're legitimate business transactions. All county had no employees. It had five shareholders, Donald Trump and his siblings and a nephew. The five of them would just split the markup on everything, and this went on for years. It was bringing in a lot of money, like millions and millions of dollars. This is a fascinating vehicle that was kind of concocted by the Trumps uh, in order to suck millions of dollars of cash out of Fred Trump's empire and into their pockets in a way that evaded the 55% gift tax. The other really just amazing part about All County is that it had just an insidious, corrosive downside for anybody living in those buildings because they used bogus receipts to raise the rent on their tenants who are, you know, low and middle class New Yorkers. It's just unbelievable. We've run the sort of the facts that we've uncovered past some of the top tax experts in the country, and every single one of them has said, wow, this is tax fraud. It is illegal. You have, if you have a business, there has to be some economic purpose to it, other than um, tax avoidance or tax evasion. <laughs> to have the opportunity to rewrite essentially 50 or 60 years of a person's life who's now sitting in the White House is incredible. Like his financial history has been wrong, we understand now, since forever. Nobody has, has figured this out and put these pieces together. My whole life, I've been covering financial journalism, following the money trail. Money, power, and greed. What more could a reporter want? Since early September, we've been reaching out to Donald Trump and his family, hoping that they would engage us. And initially, we got no comment. And then in the last few days, a lawyer for the president reached out. Not a lawyer who knows a lot about the Trump businesses and Fred Trump's empire, but rather a lawyer who is known for sending frightening letters. He sent us a short note back just saying that we should be on notice that they will sue us for defamation if we proceed with publication.
time did you guys wake up this morning? I didn't really sleep. <laughs> Largely due to the quality of the documentation we have, we're going to proceed with confidence. But whether people are going to care, you never know kind of how that's going to go until you hit the button. Okay. Let's do it. Rock and roll. Are they going to hit publish on this asset? I feel like I'm getting married or something. Here. <laughs> <This is> so <laughs> or indicted, I'm not sure which. <laughs> is this where the FBI is? <laughs> Give it Alright, it's all queued up. What? This one? Yeah, do it. Which one? <laughs> So this is just from Twitter. It's not a wow. The New York Times published a freaking 40 page long, 13,000 word, mind bending expose um, about the president. Joining us now is Suzanne Craig. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Well, it's interesting. Our, our investigation started the night that you had the tax returns from 2005 on your show, and then just got deeper and deeper and deeper into it. It's fraudulent what they did. It was systematic over decades. I think that's an important thing to know about the President of the United States. The story, there's a lot of answers in it. I don't think all the answers are there have to keep going. Get Showtime now 